Hey, what's going on everybody? This is RobWillis.info here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to install VMware vSphere ESXi version 6 onto some physical hardware. And uh, the server I'm going to be using t for today is a uh, Dell C2100 cloud server. And I'm going to be taking you through everything from basic installation and configuration all the way up to connecting to the host with the vSphere client and getting ready to create virtual machines. Alright, so the drive on the top here, this 4 gig Sony drive, is a, it's a bootable USB drive that I created using Rufus and uh, the VMware uh, ESXi ISO image. And the drive on the bottom here is just an 8 gig Kingston thumb drive and that's actually where I'm going to be installing the ES ESXi image to in this video. I always seem to get a lot of questions on this one here, um, but yes it is perfectly okay to run this from a USB and you'll see I'm actually replacing these SanDisk ones, which are all plastic, with these Kingston aluminum ones here. The, uh, the SanDisk ones seem to get a little bit warm behind the servers and I have problems with them disconnecting, so uh, I'm hoping that this will uh, solve my problem here. But uh, yeah, rather than waste a disk, it's perfectly okay to install ESXi onto a, a USB drive and uh, boot from that. Alright, so I'm going to be recording the majority of this video over the Java console, which is provided by the baseboard management controller on this server. Um, but I went ahead and powered the server on already, and um, and you can see that it goes, it's starting booting up now. Um, but because it's a physical server, it's, um, it's going to take a little bit to boot up. It's going to run through a bunch of BIOS checks. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip through that. Um, but I've already went ahead and plugged in the two USB drives to the back of the server and I picked this only one to be the uh, boot priority and uh, that should be it for now and in a few moments we'll go ahead and select that drive and then begin the ESXi install. Alright, so here we see the server's selective boot menu. I'm going to go ahead and navigate down to the USB drive, the Sony one, and I'm going to hit enter to select it. And then next we see the uh, prompt to launch the ESXi standard installer. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter to launch that. Alright, so this boot process is going to take a little bit of time here. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through some of this. And I'll pick up whenever it goes to actually the uh, configuring the install portion. So here we go finally, welcome to the VMware ESXi 6 installation, and let's go ahead and hit enter to continue here. And then we get our EULA agreement, I'm going to go ahead and hit F11 to accept and continue. And then we see it starts scanning for devices. Alright, so this should just take a second here. And we see that it displays all the drives that are available in the server, um, but we're looking for that Kingston 8 gig drive, so I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of the list here. And we see there's our Kingston Data Traveler. And I'm just going to go ahead and select that one and then hit enter to continue to install to that drive. And then we see that it scans the device and then it tells us that there's existing partitions on this drive. It's going to be overwritten. We're just going to hit enter to uh, continue on and then select US default for the keyboard layout. And then we're prompted to set the, the root password for the server. So I'm just going to go ahead and type that in and then hit enter to continue. Alright, so we see it scan the system one last time, and then it asks us to confirm the install and says that the uh, installer is configured to install ESXi 6 on the drive we selected earlier, warning the disk is going to be repartitioned and it will also be formatted. Uh, press F11 to continue with the install. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And uh, the install takes a little bit of time, and for time's sake I'm going to skip ahead through a little bit of that, but uh, I'll pick back up whenever the install has completed and we're ready to restart the server. Alright, so it's been about 10 minutes or so, and the uh, installer just wrapped up, and we see our installation complete. ESXi 6 has been successfully installed on this server, um, and also tells you that ESXi will operate in uh, evaluation mode for 60 days before you need to enter a license key. Um, but we can go ahead and remove the media and hit enter to reboot, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Alright, so uh, the server is going to begin booting up now, but I went ahead and pulled the uh, bootable USB drive with the VMware image on it out of the server and uh, left the Kingston one in there and made sure that it is now the uh, primary boot drive for the server. 
Uh, but being that this is a physical server, it's going to take forever for this thing to boot back up. So I'm going to go ahead and skip through all the BIOS checks, and I'm actually going to skip through the um, the main boot portion of ESXi, because you don't really need to see that. Um, but I'll leave the uh, the majority of it, just kind of speed through it, so you can still kind of see what it looks like, just to be familiar with it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and speed up all that now. And I'll continue when, uh, whenever the server is um, fully booted up and we're ready to configure uh, ESXi. Alright, so now that the server is fully booted up, you'll see that there's really not a whole lot you can do with the console here. We see a little bit of information about the server itself, as well as some links to download tools to manage this host. And then at the bottom there we see we can hit F2 to customize the system, and then F12 to shut down and restart the system. So let's go ahead and hit F2 to launch the uh, system customizer. And it asks us to log in, and we're going to use root, along with the uh, password that we set during the installation, and hit enter to continue. Alright, so now on the uh, system customization screen, we see that we have options to configure the password, we can configure our management network, which we can add network adapters there, set the IP addresses, enable disable IPv6, and, uh, configure DNS, that kind of stuff. Um, you can also test your management network, restore it. Um, there's also some troubleshooting options that are worth mentioning. This is where you can enable, you can enable the ESXi shell along with SSH access. Both of these items are going to be disabled by default, um, but that's pretty much it. That's um, there's really there's not a whole lot to configuring the ESXi hosts from the uh, console side. Uh, it's pretty basic. You'll see a lot of it's kind of more about getting the network up, so then you can connect to it remotely and manage it there. So uh, if that's the main way we manage it, then uh, where do we get these tools from? And that's where these download tools to manage this host come links come into play. So if you uh, you'll notice that it's just the IP address of the server itself. Um, but if we go ahead and take that IP address and we pop it into a web browser, uh, you'll see that um, right off the bat we get the connection not secure. So let's go ahead and click advanced, add the exception to get around the uh, SSL certificate error. And then we'll see that we're, um, we're brought to the VMware ESXi welcome screen. So this is where you'll go to download the main tool that you'll be using to manage ESXi, which is going to be the vSphere client for Windows. But you'll notice there's also links for VMware vCenter, documentation, and other stuff like that. Um, but like I said, the main thing we're worried about is the vSphere client for Windows. So go ahead and download that and install it on your workstation. And whenever you fire it up, it should look something like this. So we're going to go ahead and type the IP address of the ESXi host, along with the root user and the password that was set during the install process. I'm going to go ahead and check install certificate and ignore the uh, error, and let's go ahead and connect to the host. So we see right away the evaluation notice pops up, but um, it just tells us the server is going to be in evaluation mode for 60 days. Let's go ahead and click OK to continue. And uh, now we see the vSphere client pop up. And uh, this is where we'll be doing and spending the majority of our time managing our ESXi host. But um, you'll see the summary page basically gives you a rundown of the hardware um, and the configuration of the server, along with the data stores, the network, overall CPU and memory usage. And there's the uh, virtual machines tab that would show any virtual machines that are on the server, along with uh, resource allocation, performance tabs, configuration, user events, and permissions. So this tab will probably be one of the first ones you go to. This is where you'll go to configure like your storage. Um, you can add additional data stores in here as well as see the existing ones. For the networking, you can add additional vSwitches, add additional adapters to those switches. Storage adapters, you can add an iSCSI adapter, that kind of stuff. This is basically where all the configuration is going to be. And then say we want to create a new virtual machine, we just go to the host on the left hand side here and right click new virtual machine and the uh, virtual machine wizard pops up and then we can go ahead and assign a name to it, pick the data store we want it to be on, the type of virtual machine, and then you can go on and configure the uh, amount of eCPU and RAM allocations and all that kind of stuff. If you go back to the storage option under the configuration tab, you'll notice the add storage button on the top right hand side, which allows you to uh, add additional local storage disks or LUNs, as well as NFS shares. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's all very straightforward and uh, easy to use. All right, and that pretty much wraps up this video. Uh, you should now have a fully functional ESXi host that's ready to start hosting out all your VM needs. And, uh, and that's pretty much it. I uh, really hope you guys liked this one. If you liked it, make sure you give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe. And uh, thanks again for watching.